Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me once again. And as promised before, um, today we're going to add just a little more detail uh, to our little shack. Uh, what I want to do today is to add doors and windows. So we just, before anything else, I just want to make sure I'm in my doors and windows uh, layer. And what I'm going to do I am going to draw a door off to the side. Now, if you want, you could just simply draw it directly wherever you want your door and or window. Um, but I want to go over this new concept called uh, making blocks. And I'll explain a block as we go. So we're going to be using this command B to make block. Okay. But before we do, I'm going to draw what my door, what I want my door to look like. So, what I'm going to draw is a rectangle. Uh, specify for my first point at. Now, a pretty standard door is uh, two foot eight. Uh, typically, for an entrance door, you want something a little bit bigger, like 36 inches. But I'm just going to stick to two foot, two foot eight for now. Two, eight. By and they're about two inches, two inches thick. Okay, so typically you want to ha add a little bit extra to kind of cover your wall. So I'm going to add two inches here. That was using the line command. Again, I'm going to use the offset command to draw another line, the width of that door. So again, what is my distance? It's two foot eight. So since it's already, if you look down here at the command line, it already specifies it two foot eight. So I'm just going to press enter. Where do I want it? I want it up here. Okay. And the and lastly, what I want to do is I want to uh, draw the door swing. So that is from here to here. And now we're going to use a new command. TR or trim um, will trim away anything we don't want. So the way it typically works, TR, enter. Typically, what you want to do, you want to select objects. These are going to be your cutting objects. So I'm going to use this and this. Okay, so it's going to be it's going to use those lines to cut. So I hit enter again. And then what do you want to cut this? So as you can see, this is what my door looks like now. And now we go we're, I'm going to go back to B for make block. Why? Because I want to make this into my door block. Now what a block is, is essentially like a little representation of something, in this case our door. But you only, if, if it's something that you're going to be using a lot during, throughout your drawing, the easiest way to do it is to make it a block and then that way you don't have to redraw it every single time. So here I click or I hit B to make block. Uh, what is the name? I'm going to call it 28 door. What what objects? Well, I already specified my objects. Uh, convert to block. Uh, object selected for, so we're good. Base point. I'm going to click specify on screen. Typically, I, I always have that clicked here. Units, inches, okay, it all looks good. So we click OK. Um, oh, and I had <laughs> redefined it previously. So I'm going to redefine it, yes. Where do I want my base point? I want my base point here. Okay. So now this is my block. Now what I want to do is move this over to this corner and I want to shift it up by two inches. So I hit to enter and there is my door except oh no look at this this line was supposed to cover the whole wall 
Well, luckily there's a way to fix that. What you do is you double click your block and this, this dialog box comes in, click OK. And what you want to do is now do the opposite of trim um, is a command called extend. And again, it's the opposite of trim. So what I'm going to do is hit EX. Now this, I'm going to show you guys something new and you could use this with trim as well. In this case, you don't click your cutting edges first, you click what line you want it to extend to. So in this case, I want this guy to extend to this line. So I would hit this line. I would select it. But in this case, and this th you could use this with trim as well, if you hit enter, it just selects everything. So it automatically wants to select, to, uh, uh, sorry, automatically wants to extend to everything. So now if I do that here, here it'll automatically detect okay well what's the closest line to me it's this guy so okay I'll just extend to here and if I keep extending it it'll just keep looking for the next thing but in this case this is what we need so um, I hit escape where is this yeah save and close external reference editing do you really want to close editing and save changes? Yes. So what that does, that updates our block. So now that I've created a block, let's say I wanted a back door or a door, let me think. Yeah, a back door on this corner. There is another command called insert block. So with insert block, the, the alias is I, enter, it says, okay, what block do you want to, what, what block do you want to insert? Well, I only have one block, but if you had more, it would give you a whole list down here, or it, if you pull this menu down, it'll have, it'll give you a whole list. In this case, we only have one. So this is the door, th this is the block that I want to insert. Scale, um, I'm gonna leave one, 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 just same scale as before, same everything as before, but except the insertion point, I wanna specify it on screen. Again, I would just leave that selected. Explode, what explode does is it'll, it will essentially break the door down into its, um, its basic components. So rather than it being one full assembly, as we're treating it, it would be, it would treat it as like a rectangle with a semicircle and two lines, you know, just like what we did to build it. So for, for now, I'm going to leave this unexploded. So specify on screen. I'm going to hit, I want to select this corner, but just as before, it needs a two inch offset. There's something wrong here, right? This door is facing the wrong direction. So do I need to make another block? Well, no, because all I have to do, uh, th this geometry is correct, but it's 180 degrees in the, uh, in the wrong direction. So in this case, what I'm going to do is use my rotate command, RO, to rotate it, RO, enter. And then you could just rotate it 180 degrees. You could also specify the exact angle down down at the command line. And by the way, whenever you enter things into the command line, you don't have to click the command line. You could just uh, you could just enter it into your keyboard. So like for whatever reason, if we wanted to rotate it 45 degrees, typically counterclockwise is the positive direction. So if I wanted it to I wanted it to be 45 degrees down here, I, that would be minus 45 degrees. Right, but I don't want it in this in this configuration. I want it. Oops. R O enter. I want it like this. Okay, and now we have two doors. And you know what? What I'm gonna do is go ahead and make my windows while I'm at it. I'm. This is gonna be a slightly longer, a slightly faster process. I mean, just because we've already done the doors. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw um, 
Wait, am I? Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure I'm in the correct layer. So I'm going to draw a four inch line. Okay. And then I'm going to offset that line by three feet. In this case, I'm just going to specify 36 inches because it's three feet is 36 inches. Enter. And the reason why I'm saying 36 inches is just because a, a pretty, like if you were to get like a standard door, if you were to ask, okay, what is a, I'm sorry, a standard window, what is this, what are the dimensions of a standard window? Typically it's, uh, it's three feet by five feet. And that's a pretty standard window. Again, this is the windows come in all shapes and sizes, but this is what I'm going with for now. So I'm going to offset that by 36 inches. Here you go. And the symbol for a window is actually pretty easy. I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to snap to my midpoint. Okay. This is something else I wanted to go over. There is something called object snaps or O snap, which is this right here. In our aliases, this is one of the function keys. F3. Um, uh, by the way, uh, these function keys, I'll, I'll go over what they are in the, well, actually I'll go ahead and go ahead and go over them now. You could ignore F4, F5, and F6. This is only for AutoCAD and I believe the newer versions of NanoCAD, but not in our version. So let's, let's just ignore this for now. So what we want to do is use O snap. Um, you, this is on by default, so I'm not going to play with it. And I'm going to explain these later for, I'm going to skip F4, F5, and F6, just because they don't apply to NanoCAD, at least not our version of NanoCAD, but they, this is what they would do in AutoCAD. And I would assume in the newer version of, of NanoCAD as well. Um, so let's see. So I, for now, I'm just going to go over F2 and F3. So F2 shows your command line, but it shows it as a window. So if you said, wait, how long, like what, what, uh, what command did I use here or what, uh, how long did I make this? This is, this kind of keeps a history of your commands. Okay. But if you just click F2, F2 toggles it. I usually keep it off, but if I, I forget, oh shoot, how long or how big did I make that? that window or how much did I rotate the door that time? Oh, it was negative 45 degrees. That's right. Um, but yeah, it just keeps a history of it. It does come in handy, but here we're going to focus on F3, which toggles the O snap. Now it's on by default, but what the O snap does, I'm going to escape to get out of a command. I'm going to get into a command, um, line command but I'm going to turn O snap off. Okay. So now I want to use this line as reference, but I'm not snapping to it. O snap, what it does, I don't know, I don't know why it's still showing it on. It's off because it is, it is off. But so what O snap does is allows you, I'm going to turn it back on. It allows you to snap to certain, uh, to certain objects already in your drawing. And you could pick what it snaps to. Typically by default, I think it has endpoint and what else? So uh, uh, I'll explain what I like to keep on is endpoint, midpoint, center, uh, and I'll explain center quadrant, yeah, center and quadrant later. But typically what I like to keep on is endpoint, midpoint, and intersection. So endpoint is if you have a line, it's the ends of lines. I think those are on by default. I don't think midpoint is, so I'd usually turn it on. And then if you draw something, the intersection would be... Um, Let's say I draw this line and I want another line. Actually, let me draw a line here. And I, if I wanted to snap to that intersection, why is it not snapping to the, <laughs> to that intersection? I'd suppose intersection should snap to this, in, to 
the two lines crossing. I'm not sure why it's not doing it right now. Anyway. So yeah, that's what it does. So here, I'm going to make block three foot window window everything okay. My base point here, I want it to be. Wait, does my O snap off? Yeah, it was off, huh? Maybe that's why. So this is the midpoint for this line. I want it shifted over by half. So 36 divided by 2 is 18. So I'm going to use this midpoint as a reference and shift over to the left and type in 18. Yeah. Now this should be aligned with, with the midpoint. Actually, let's double check. Oh wait, this, does, this won't show you the midpoint anymore. But you can draw a line, and yeah, the midpoints are are aligned. By the way, whenever you want to get out of a, a command, or if you're in the middle of a command and you typed in the wrong thing, you just hit escape to get out of it. I, I don't think I mentioned that in the previous video. So one other thing I wanted to go over is the copy command. So if we go look at our alias list, the copy command is CO. Uh, if you want, didn't want to use the insert command, you could just use the copy command. So C O copy, and then this time you could just select um, select whatever your your base point is going to be. In this case, I'm going to, and it doesn't have to be on the object. In this case, I'm going to hit this midpoint, and I want to copy it here. I want to copy it. Let's see on this midpoint this midpoint and again all you have to do is use the rotate command again keep in mind that your base point is no longer on the object it's on this midpoint so you hit this midpoint you rotate it by 90 degrees and in this case since you want to uh, rotate in this case you want to rotate the opposite direction you could also just use your mouse Okay, so that's about it for blocks for today. Thank you all for watching again. And again, as as we as I keep making more of these videos, I'm gonna we're gonna be adding more and more detail to this to our little shack, make it a nice little happy place. <laughs> all right, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.